is Jaguar Shoes Collective Shortwaves. My name is George Godfrey, and today I'm talking to Los Bichos. Hello. 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 Hi. So we've got we've got Carol, we've got Josephine, we've got Nick. Uh, how has your day been so far, everyone? Oof. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm Pretty a bit tired. You're going to be more positive than me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we were just catching up, Joe, saying that, uh, at Nick's, that you've just finished work, and this is kind—I of, feel like we've kind of got an after-work drinks vibe going on. Definitely, hundred <laughs> percent. It's after six. It's all good. How's uh, how's lockdown been for you guys as as a band? So, have you been able to keep working on music and keep going, or is it just sort of put the brakes on things? We've definitely been like working on. It some ideas, trying to collaborate on things. We've, they've done like a postcard competitions and new t-shirts and like trying to get things going outside of playing live. Yeah, yeah. yeah we haven't been able to get together and actually play and, and work no. anything further, but we kind of had the time to move around the things that we already had cooked up. So we put up a single on vinyl. We kind of worked the idea out while we were in lockdown. They're like, oh, what do we have that we can release? Oh, maybe we should do this one. So we've been working uh, towards little little projects of things that we had going on from before. That, that one's, the link's about to die, right? I wanted to ask about the music video for that because that looked like it was a lot of fun to make. Like, do you want to just talk me through it? It was. Basically, the concept we had was that we had no budget for it. So we have to work around, and no time as well. So we had to do a video like in a week. So we were like, okay, what can we do? So we were like, okay, we bought a green screen of Amazon, stuck it into a world. The idea was we would love to play at a beach. So we might as well put a beach in the background and make our own cocktails and make a video. Maybe we could manifest it into a real situation at some stage. Have you ever sort of when you've been putting your heads together to think of ideas for videos like had to sort of hold back and think now nah, I think that's a that's a bit too spinal tap that's a bit too much it's never too much never too much <laughs> okay because I did I did read somewhere that uh, that Josie you could you can ride two ponies at the same time is that right no I never hear that <laughs> I, I just saw I just saw it on the internet that somewhere <laughs> there, is a, there is a video of that the depths of YouTube somewhere um yeah i i can <laughs> well i could <laughs> have you got any any more uh in a hole <laughs> have you got any yeah. other other uh, obscure talents that you could maybe put into the next you don't need any others you can write two ponies that's it <laughs> we should, yeah we should include that in a video for sure um, there is a video of it, so we should totally yeah put the sneak it in somewhere yeah, absolutely. I'm also at the moment in the video wearing a very good outfit, um, which was designed by the guy who designed all ABBA costumes. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, so it's great. It, it's great. It, yeah. it's a banging outfit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I look very cool on those two little, little ponies just trotting about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to it in the watch. next uh, Lost Pictures video then. You guys have played some pretty amazing shows over the years, and I wanted just to ask about a couple of them. When you toured with Mac DeMarco, how was that? So much fun. It was amazing. The The guys were really awesome. It was just a pleasure to hang out with, you know, when you show up and everyone is just happy to see each other. And the shows were really good. The, the, his crowd is amazing. It's really, really young crowd, but really receptive. Mm -hmm. So they really like, responded really well. I was really, really super positive. There's there's literally not a bad story from that trip. It's amazing. Really, yeah, really there good. Isn't. He's a lovely person. And like, there were so many moments where we were just like hanging out backstage, getting ready or whatever. And he was just kind of say some like outrageous jokes. Like he's a very funny person. And I think that's just how he is. It's not like a persona he puts on. The whole of his band are just such nice people. They're all yeah. 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 very lovely. Well, at the beginning of the tour, he, he told us that he kind of had given up on crowd surfing, but he changed his mind halfway, didn't he? <laughs> I think it was Nick that inspired him, wasn't it? We did two shows in Dublin, and, um, and towards the end of their set, he got us all on stage to play tequila with them. Nice. <laughs> 
so we were just being like just really deranged with percussion and stuff and for some reason i thought it'd be a good idea to go crowd surfing um and yeah he obviously looked <laughs> thought we were missing out on some fun it was just descended into absolute chaos it was great <laughs> have you have you kept in touch we were meant to do a festival with, with them in the summer um, which obviously isn't happening mm. um, but hopefully we'll play play with them again it'd be great to catch up yeah it really will just what, yeah the best of time what about when you guys played with the murlocs that yeah, was also really fun i mean yeah they're also really lovely guys we've been so lucky with everyone we've toured it's been yeah, like, super mm. easy to talk to to hang out sweet respectful really talented as well we love the murlocs we were just watching their set every night just just perfect really i'm a big uh, i'm a big ambrose fan but that for me like that sort of came through king gizzard and i did see that you guys have done your sort of cover uh was it trapdoor that you used to play trapdoor, or still play yeah. uh what's, cool. what's your favorite giz album oh i really like the nonagon affinity one yeah uh, or fishing for fishes nice uh -huh. mine changes I'm currently having a Fishing for Fishes period, but I would say all together is paper mache. Uh, running second is flying microtone or banana. Yeah, I think. But yeah, I, they, each of them have a different vibe, so you it makes sense that you get obsessed with them in different times of yeah day or of your life. Because yeah, you have a poster in the background of them, Carol. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I did want to ask, because you guys have been doing Los Bichos for a couple of years now, were you all in bands before that? I was in, I was in a band called the MVPs before that. Uh, okay. so it's more like kind of yeah. garage, rocky vibes. Uh, so it's very different from, from Los Bichos, but yeah. I was playing in a noise rock hardcore band called Dead Arms. Sarah, she used to be in bands, she's still, like, she just bands 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 she plays for a lot of people uh, I met Sarah when she was in Kid Wave um, I, this is my first band I've never had a band before um, I met her because I was doing photography for them mm. so I met her through that and then Agus back in Uruguay she used to sing in a band so yeah she's got some experience on stage as well I was very inexperienced I almost died in my, on our first show uh, <laughs> That, I mean, thought, everyone I'm, said it was fine. I thought I was gonna die, pass out, you know, like all this stuff. But it, it went well. It went well. I was gonna say I'd need you to elaborate on that a little bit, just because I, I love hearing those stories of bands' first gigs where everyone's like really nervous and they think everything goes wrong, and then they walk out and it's just like, "Oh no, that was great." And it's like, "What?" Well, yeah, I think it was just me because obviously I didn't have any experience on stage performing. Yeah. And everyone else had. It was like Matthias, Harry, like all of the friends that were filling in for us. It was like people that are like session musicians. They just know it. They don't. Right. They don't care. <laughs> just standing there. First of all, thinking, how did they get here? Second of all, I hope I remember all the songs. I hope I don't just pass out. You know, because that would be a bit weird. Yeah, would be, <laughs> I was, I was in the audience for that gig, and as an yeah, as a member of the audience, I think you nailed it. It was very fun. <laughs> uh, so we're recording these videos with Jaguar Shoes Collective. Uh, their venue, uh, the Victoria, is played host to like, loads of bands coming through London. For a lot of bands, it's their first London show. And I just wanted to ask, you guys played there last January, I think it was, for uh, Burger Records Night, the Label Mates one. How was that show? It was, it was packed. I remember it was loads of people. I love the Victoria. I think it's... Um, it's a great venue. I love the, the little bookshelf hidden door. Yeah, um, always confuses people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I've been confused there. <laughs> uh, and I know about it. Um, but no, I've, I've always just had really good times there. So, great Yeah, it's venue. a fun venue to see bands as well. There's a lot of uh, little bands, especially coming from the States that, like you said, is their first gig in the UK or first gig in London is at the Victoria. So it's cool, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a great venue. I'd say it's, it's one of the, the smaller ones, like a 200 kappa. Um, how important do you think smaller venues like that are for 
when bands are coming through and trying to hone their craft and sort of work out what it is that they want to do? I think that's like the perfect size to just to start with, isn't it? It's like, um, you know, intimate enough to feel like, you know, there is a vibe. It doesn't feel too small or too big. So I think it suits a lot of bands and even like more established act. It's quite a novelty to, to see them in, in that kind of sized venue. Uh, it can make it feel really special. Yeah, it's really important that there's a bunch of venues of that size because obviously mm. there's so many bands touring all the time and th- those are the most important venues because as soon as you as you get offers to play to play bigger, that's fine. You're done. You, you you're, you're good. You know, like but it, when you're like you say trying to figure out what you're doing as a band or doing your first few tours when you're just making ends meet and all that, those venues are the ones that really really count and also get people like through the door by their identity you know a lot of people I guess they go to Victoria just to see a show even without really knowing who's playing they just live, yeah. live like, nearby or they know that the type of shows that are being put on there are for certain you know genre certain type that you, they know they're gonna like so it's really important to have a few of those hubs around yeah and you always kind of you often see the same people those venues and you kind of it's a good mm-hmm. place to meet people and make friends anyway and yeah, I've been to quite a few um, all day as at the Victoria. Yeah, it's it's, def- it's one of my favourite places, and uh, yeah, hopefully after all the lockdown stuff, it'll be all right to uh, to reopen and get back to the gigs because obviously everywhere's yeah. struggling right now. Fingers crossed. Uh, I actually saw Franz Ferdinand there. Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, Franz Ferdinand played at Victoria. Did they um, really? With Telegram supporting. I think they were doing some small shows because they were releasing a new album or something like that. And it was just literally, there's no tickets, you go there and queue up. And I did, I went with Ray and we queued up. It was fun. How long did you have to queue for though? That's the question. Um, I don't know, a couple hours. It wasn't, (laughs) it was just sat down, it was in the middle of the summer, we just sat down outside with a couple of cans of beer. Fair enough. It was amazing, it was good, it was really, really good. Well, Aww. I'll I'll let you guys go in a bit, but I I wanted to do this thing. So we've been wrapping up our chats with the Jaguar Shoes pinup profiles, and these have been some like quick fire questions. So we'll start we'll start with you, Carol. Yes. Which is your favourite city, Montevideo or London? Oh, damn. Um, none of them. No, I'm lying. London. Uh, Nick, what is the best medical TV show? Ooh. <laughs> I would probably say Hospital because it was filmed at my hospital and I was in it. So obviously that's nice. the best one. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you'd be going to see a patient and suddenly there'd be like a boom mic over your head. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Quick fire, isn't it? <laughs> hospital. Hospital it is. Uh, and then Josie, you said that margaritas are your favourite cocktail. And I'm, I think you might all be able to help me out here. How do I make the best one? Oh, well, you watch our music video, so Link's about to die, and you'll find out. But <laughs> okay. no, it's, uh, just two, two parts of um, tequila, one part of lime, and I, I tend to do one part of Contro, and uh, just mix that up, put some ice, shake it, pour it out, drink it, job done. Sounds good. I think I might do that after this. Uh, guys, thanks so much for chatting. I've got one last question, and it's it's one that a lot of people are wondering. When can we expect a Los Bichos album? Next year. Yeah. Yeah? That's like 100%. 100% very early next year. Amazing. It's the year. Sick. Well, yeah. thanks so much again. We've got Caro, Josie, and Nick there from Los Bichos. Thanks for chatting. Thank, Thank you so much. Much. You can listen to shortwaves at jaguarshoes.com forward slash radio. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. You can find us at Jaguar Shoes Collective and at Victoria Dalston.